You're watching Star Wars Day with Bob's. Let's get out of here, Han Solo. Careful, Luke Skywalker. Introducing Death Star World, two play sets in one, new from Star Wars Micro Collection line. Fourteen die-cast figures and action poses included. Death Star Escape has an elevator and a cannon that explodes. Wow! It connects the Death Star Compactor. It's you and me, Ben Kenobi. Watch this! Oh, no! The wall! Run for it! Made it! Death Star World from Star Wars Micro Collection line. Play sets also sold separately, figures included. New from Kenner. All right, so let's take a look at Star Wars 81. It was really, really cool to go back and revisit what the true fate of Boba Fett was. And you can see the issue here. It's like, you know, he goes into the Sarlacc pit, and so many people were so disappointed because he was such a cool character. He was set up to be this big kick-butt dude, and he kind of goes into the slime, and that's it, right? And we don't know much. But here, Joe Duffy really gets kind of, like, empowered to give us a little bit more of the story and a little bit more of like what could have happened. And I, I really thought this was interesting because it it starts with really, and it's really more of a Han Solo story that starts right after the Battle of Endor, right? Everything is over, it's that night. And the next morning, he's being confronted by someone he owes money to. And you've got the typical Han Solo, you know, it's me, you can trust me. He's like, no, you owe me money. You're no good on debts. Jabba wants you. Blah, 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 that kind of thing. And he's he's kind of thrust in the situation with Leia. And you can see how intimate they are. You can see Chewbacca with the Ewoks. And you get this sensibility with, obviously, Lando, another X-Wing pilot or something like that's commenting about what a great party it was with the Ewoks and all of that. And you kind of have what happens the next day. And Han and Leia, and love, I love the finger pointing, right? Going right back to that scene in Empire. And really what's happening is Han is having a very difficult time adapting because he was frozen, right? So we have years that have passed between Empire and Jedi, and he needs to figure out what to do. And he needs money. So he goes back to the Falcon. He's kind of like taking it all in because obviously Lando and Chewie have had it. They've been the ones that have been uh, using the Falcon to contribute to the rebellion. And Han's not really been a part of any of that. So they're going to go on this trip, Chewie staying behind, and Leia... Uh, super hot Leia, by the way. Super hot picture there of Leia. They're going to go on this little mission that he's got. He's got some money stashed, and that's his big scheme to do that. And uh, it, Well, before I go too far, I love this shot of them hugging. I know it sounds cheeky, but I liked it. So anyway, so they're going to go on this mission, and he has uh, money to go get, and that's kind of where we're at with that kind of thing, right? Now, what we have with the, the Flash cut over the the panels that move us over to Tatooine the Sarlacc pit and you see this quick shot of this this figure in the ground and you basically have Boba Fett basically just being burst out right and you're like is he flying out has he been spit up what what actually have how long was he down there those kinds of things and that's kind of what we have before he's found by the Jawa in this uh, sand crawler and their protocol protocol droid basically treats him as like a cyborg, a robot of some kind. They don't really know exactly what he is. So the Jawas take him, and that's kind of where we go. Meanwhile, Han and Leia reach this the, the the planet, and he's looking for information. And she's she's communicating with the locals about how bad life is. And she doesn't quite get it. And you have this sort of like backstory of life's not so great. Just because you took out the Empire didn't mean that it reversed the fortunes of everyone, right? It's like, you know, the Jawas are even a threat. And Han is really, really down. He's not, he doesn't really know his place in all this. He doesn't know what to do. So that's kind of where it takes off. And you have this great little gentle moment with him holding hands. So let's not get too far down the rabbit hole here and hide the ball because this is more about Boba Fett, right? Everybody wants to know how Boba Fett originally had survived the Sarlacc pit and what was the story. And I will get to a spoiler warning when we get a little bit closer to how this book actually ends. Uh, well, what I can say is that uh, R2 has, you know, been picked up by the Jawas, and that's what Han and Leia were responding to in their search, and they're sort of like this chase sequence, getting onto a sand crawler and all that. They don't realize that Boba Fett is actually inside. Now, R2 does have this brief moment where he sees Boba Fett, right? He, the, the droid on board doesn't know that he, he, he keeps referring to, it, 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 it keeps referring to Boba Fett as a possible cyborg. R2 has sort of like the equivalent of a flashback for comic book purposes. Obviously, it's a droid of, of them realizing it's Boba Fett. And I actually love the drawings of Boba Fett in this book, which we'll get to more in a minute. Now, 
as things are kind of playing out with this chase and this battle sequence where they're trying to get on this sand crawler and rescue R2, is like Boba Fett sort of like being smacked around a little bit, bounced around. He's sort of like coming to. He has an amnesia. We don't, he doesn't quite understand who he is, where he is, what's actually going on. And then later, once Han's aboard, you have sort of this moment with um, uh, Han facing Boba Fett, and you're, you're sort of like, well, I don't understand why, what, what do I do with him? How come he doesn't know who I am? He actually says hallelujah, which I think is actually kind of funny. Um, Boba Fett is there. You think he has the sort of like the draw on Han. That's not how this is going to play out. And he says, all right, well, that's great, buddy. You've done a real good job so far. Now, just give me your hand and let me pull you up because the sand crawler is headed towards the Sarlacc pit. So the sand crawler is actually headed towards doom and going to go into the Sarlacc pit and, you know, crash, be devoured, whatever. Now, Han's there inside. Again, there, there's blasts on the outside. Then Leia starts calling out and it says, Han, 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 what's going on? And that sort of like kind of snaps Boba Fett, like the name recognition kind of comes into play. And you sort of have this great panel with his blaster drawn and pointed and it's like, oh, crap. Boba Fett knows who he is now, right? Then they have to figure out how to kind of get him off of there. And um, Leia's yelling Han. That's actually what wakes up Boba Fett and whatever. So, spoiler alert, let me tell you what actually happens. But this is a really popular comic, by the way. This is actually one of those that, uh, you know, would be considered a key issue, even though it's not like a first appearance or anything like that. It's because of it's such an integral point to the old lore of how Boba Fett would have survived the Sarlacc pit. All right, so that was your spoiler alert. What ends up happening is Han and R2, everyone gets off of the sand crawler that needs to. Boba Fett goes over into the Sarlacc pit with the sand crawler. Now, he survived before, right? He was either spit up or jetpacked out, covered in the ooze, completely like partially digested or, or you know, injured or whatever it happened. And then now he's in the sand crawler, so presumably he's going to easily survive that as well. But that's, I, I really think it's funny that Joe Duffy had wrote this story, and the story is mocked for this, right? The story is joke that he is out of the Sarlacc pit but ends up back in the Sarlacc pit. But reality is I can see Joe Duffy wanting to write the story, pitching the story. They run it over to Lucasfilm and them going, well, you can write a story, but he has to end up back in the Sarlacc pit. Like, you can write a story on how he gets out of the Sarlacc pit, but he has to end up back in the Sarlacc pit, which makes no sense. But I can, I, I wish if there's a way, maybe, and maybe we should do this. Maybe we should try to track down Joe Duffy and ask this because I'd love to know what was told and what her restrictions were and kind of how this played out. So, and with that's a take. This is a, this is a fun little comic, Star Wars 81. Uh, days after Return of the Jedi, we get uh, Boba Fett and what actually happened, which is really kind of like the one big looming question after Jedi. It's like, what happens to Boba Fett? Um, there's another Boba Fett issue I want to just touch on briefly that if you want to read. It's called Enemy of the Empire. It's a little mini series, also by uh, done by Dark Horse. So Dark Horse, of course, gets the licensing much later on. Now, one thing I want to point out, too, with this screenshot was on the right-hand side, you have Star Wars Timeline. This was the original timeline that threaded together novels, comic books, all the different things, kind of like the rule book of how the can canon was being structured and what the rules were going to be. Enemy of the State actually takes place before New Hope, where the Empire works with Boba Fett on a task of getting an item. And you get to see some of the conflict between him and Vader. And, and you know, Boba Fett is not going to be a friend of the Empire. He's not going to be a guy that's going to play nice by the rules. He has too much Mandalore in him. And uh, it's really not a bad little read. It's short. It's, only, I think it's, it's either four or six issues. Uh, it's fine. I haven't read it in a while, so I would probably should revisit it as well. But uh, yeah, Boba Fett, uh, Star Wars uh, 81. Hopefully you're having a great day. This has been a fun little time to uh, revisit some of this stuff, and I hope you're uh, having a good time uh, enjoying it and revisiting it with me. So thanks so much for watching and listening. I am Pops. Mm -hmm.